All right, we got one last problem here in this section about rational zeros theorem. It's another uh, polynomial function of degree three. So we know we're supposed to have three zeros. Uh, we're supposed to have, well, it says completely factor, so we expect to have three nice binomial factors. But again, I haven't given you any information. I haven't told you here's a zero or here's a factor where we can start breaking things down. So let's, let's examine that rational zeros theorem to see what we can get, okay? So when we do this, again, we go back to P over Q, right? P will be factors of that constant term. So you look at six and your factors are one, two, three, and six. And then Q will be a factor from your leading coefficient of three. So those factors are one and three. So if I try to put all this together to list all of the possible rational zeros. Okay, so one over one is one. One over three is one third. Two over one is two, and then I get two thirds. Three over one is three. Three over three is one, so I have that. Six over one is six, and then six over three is two, and that's already represented. So what you're doing as we've been showing in these videos, is that you look at all the possible combinations. You take one over each of these numbers, take two over each of these, three over that, and so on and so on, until everybody has had their chance to combine with one another. Okay. So what we're saying is that if there's a rational zero to this polynomial function, it has to be one of these guys. Okay. So this is where we go to the scrap piece of paper again, and we just start doing synthetic division until we find something that works. Uh, again, the easiest guy to check is the number one, okay? So to check to see if positive one works, take these coefficients and combine them. Three minus four minus 17 plus six. Does that equal zero? Very quickly, I hope you guys can see that no, it doesn't, not even close. Uh, let's try negative one, okay? So if I try negative one again, I, I'm not trying to be neat here. Three, negative four, negative 17 and six. Bring down the three, times one is negative three, that gives me negative seven. Positive seven gives me negative 10. Positive 10, that's 16, so that does not work out. All right, what was the next nice number that we had here? Uh, I'm not gonna do one third, let's try two. All right, so let's try two. Same numbers. Bring down the three, so that gives me six, which is positive two. Multiply, so give me four, that gives me negative, I don't like the way this is going. I get negative 20. Well, that guy does not work out. Let's try negative two. So three, negative four, negative 17, and six, all right. That's three, I multiply to get negative six. That's negative 10, which becomes positive 20. That's three, wait, did I do that right? Yeah, three, so that becomes negative six, so there you go. We found a number that works, it was negative two. Now I know a lot of these examples, two has been the guy that works, but that's not always going to be the case. All right, so we know that negative two was the winner. And you know, it might've been three that worked or negative three. Um, so sometimes you might skip the two and try three or six. It, it's really up to you, but you just have to keep going until you find one guy that works. All you need is one. Again, it takes that guy from degree three to degree two, makes it quadratic, makes it easy. All right, so my coefficients, again, we already did this on the scratch work, but here make it a little bit nicer and neater for you. All right, so bring down the three, multiply to get negative six, combine to get negative 10, multiply to get positive 20, add to get three, multiply to get negative six, and I get my remainder of zero. And so now we translate this we understand that we went from 
x to the third to something that's x squared. So this now becomes 3x squared minus 10x plus 3 is equal to 0. You can go off to the side and do your factoring for this. Here's something that we do know, though. I mean, you can still do the AC method. There's no problem with that. Uh, sometimes logic works in our favor. Because, see, we have 3x squared, and the only way to break down 3 is to use 3 and 1. So that means you have to use 3x and x. For this constant term here, 3, the only way to break down that 3 is again 3 and 1. However, um, if you look at some of the videos that I have for factoring, you'll see that I can't put a 3 here. See, I can't have in the same set of parentheses uh, a common factor other than 1. So putting a 3 here would say there's a common factor of 3, but there wasn't a common factor of 3 where it came from. So that means the 3 would have to go here, and then one would have to go here. And you'll see that I would need to use two negatives in order to get that positive three. Checking this real quick, that's a negative one x, it's a negative nine x on the outside, and negative one and negative nine is negative 10. So there we go, we factored it. Again, you can always go up to the side to do the AC method, it's up to you. So when I solve this, I would need to add the one and divide by three, or from here, x equals positive 3. So look at these two solutions that we got. 1 third and 3. They are part of the possible rational zeros that we could get. And that's what we use the rational zeros theorem for. Alright, let's come back up here to the top. It says completely factor this function. Alright, so our first 0 was negative 2, so that means the factor here is x plus 2. The two remaining factors were what we just found at the bottom of the page. So that was 3x minus 1 and x minus 3. Listing all of the zeros. The first zero we identified was negative 2. And then from factoring at the very bottom we found out that the other two zeros were 1 third and 3. So really, all you have to do is find one zero that works, which means you have one factor, and you've now been able to take this big polynomial that was causing us problems, and you break it down into pieces that we can easily work. Okay? List all of your intercepts. Well, for your x-intercepts, all three of these guys are real. So that's going to give you negative 2 comma 0. We get positive 1 third 0, and we get 3, 0. Don't forget your y-intercept. So your y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, oops, sorry, there you go, 6. It's that constant term. So there we have it. We've answered everything about this question. We've found all the factors. We've found all the zeros. We found all the intercepts, including the y-intercept. So, hop into the homework in my math lab and see what you guys can do with this. All right? See you for the next section.